Hello again everybody, this is Steve Callis speaking of sports and we're here to talk about initially the 2020 dunk contest and that controversy uh, as well as eventually talking about should they raise the rims in all regular season NBA games. Um, you know what happened, Jones beat Gordon in the dunk contest, it was very controversial, it came out after the fact. Uh, that after many rounds, including some bonus rounds where they had been tied and tied and tied, apparently the judges wanted to make it a tie again and somehow, according to Common, one of the judges, somehow it got screwed up, that's a quote, and um, three people uh, gave Gordon a nine instead of two and he lost. And it's the second time he got jobbed. He got jobbed uh, a few years ago when Zach Levine was the winner. Uh, and Gordon says he's never going to be in it again. And look, if you watch what he did, and the athleticism of these guys today is incredible, you'll know at least what should have happened is what I hoped it would, ha would happen, and that is just have two winners. I mean, how many games have you seen in your life where afterwards one or both of the coaches say, oh, it's terrible, somebody had to lose this game. Well, this is an exhibition. This is dunking on a 10-foot basket, which is like, you know, a 6-foot guy dunking on an 8-foot basket. I mean, it's just... It, it, it's gotten out of control to me. The athleticism's incredible, but it's still at 10 feet. So I think they should have called it a tie. And I think forward looking, it might not be a bad idea in the dunk contest to go from 10 feet, make it like the pole vault. Go 10-6, 11, 11-6, 11, 12 feet, even higher. Let's see who can really jump the highest and not you know, take six steps before you dunk or jump over guys before you dunk. That's all cool and that's the way the dunk contest has gone. Um, but I think it would be cooler to see who can really dunk on the highest rim. And you basketball fans will know back in 2009, none other than Dwight Howard, remember, everybody remembers he went into a phone booth and he came out with the Superman cape on. And that's when Dwight Howard was young and really athletic. He's on the Lakers now. He's not as good, obviously, but he's still a factor. And not only did he come out in the Superman cape, but he brought out a 12-foot rim. Do you guys remember this? And he had somebody throw the ball up in the air. It actually hit the rim, I think, by accident and came off, and he went up and dunked it, Dwight Howard. So he's dunked on a 12-foot basketball, uh, on a basketball rim in the dunk contest. But when I heard all of this, I remembered some history I had learned from a friend of mine many years ago. And I don't know if you guys will know this, but on March 7th, 1954, the Minneapolis Lakers played the Hawks, uh, and it was a regular season NBA game, and they actually used 12-foot rims. And of course, apparently the backstory is the NCAA in college, they were thinking of using 12-foot rims for real, and so the NBA decided, we'll try this game, we'll see what happens. Uh, and by all accounts, it was a total disaster, but there is an official NBA game where the Minneapolis Lakers won by two. Uh, they were the best team in basketball. They had five Hall of Famers on their roster, including George Mikan, who was the first great big center. If you've seen video of him, I don't think athletically he was good as the later guys, Russell and Wilt or Elijah one or whoever you want to pick, Shaq. Uh, but he was the dominant force at the time. And with a 12-foot basket, because he would literally catch the ball, you know, four feet from the basket and just drop it in. He was seven feet tall, and most of the other guys were much smaller, not like today's game. And he shot two for 14 in that game and really hated it. Um, but it's just kind of funny to read at the time what they were trying to do. And virtually all the comments were negative. But there are a few fascinating things, not just the 12-foot rim game, but there are a few other fascinating things about that game. Again. They, the Minneapolis Lakers, that's why the Los Angeles Lakers are the Los Angeles Lakers. They moved from Minneapolis, where you have the Great Lakes, to Los Angeles, and they decided not to change the name. Obviously, I don't know for sure, but I don't think there are many lakes around Los Angeles. But that's why the Lakers are the Lakers. Some people don't even know that. But back in Minneapolis, they were the dominant team. They won like four of the first five NBA championships in the late 40s and early 50s. And again, they had five Hall of Famers, Vern Mickelson comes to my head, Jim Pollard, Slater Martin, I think I'm leaving one out. Uh, and of course, the Hawks had, had nobody. Uh, the Hawks were the Milwaukee Hawks then. They eventually moved to St. Louis and became the St. Louis Hawks, where they won a championship over Russell's Celtics with Bob Pettit as the superstar. And today, of course, as you know, they're the Atlanta Hawks. But a few other interesting things about the game. The coach of the Hawks, the player coach of the Hawks, was none other than Red Holtzman. 
and it was his first coaching job. He was a player coach. He was a very good player at Holtzman. And as you New York Knicks fans know, he went on to coach uh, the Knicks to their only two world championships in 1970, 1973. His name and his win numbers are up in the rafters at Madison Square Garden. So it's just interesting to find out that he was involved. And his quote after the game was, they could move the rims up to 20 feet and the players would eventually adjust. And maybe that's true, but that would be ridiculous. Um, the problem is if you were going to move the rims now in today's real game, you know, you might move it to 11 feet or 12 feet. You'd have to have like a year of practice. You couldn't do what they did in the NBA. The reason everybody shot terribly is because it's not like they could practice for a month on 12-foot rims. It, it was really weird. And again, the big man who just used to lay it in couldn't lay it in, and that's probably why he shot two for 14. Mike in was usually one of the leaders in uh, percentage of shooting, as usually the big men are. Why? Because even today they're shooting five feet from the basket, three feet from the basket. They're dunking over everybody. That still happens. So. I think it was an interesting opportunity back in the 50s. I don't know if it's realistic to do it today in the NBA. I really think that they should do it in the dunk contest again so we can see who can jump the highest and dunk at 12 or even 13 feet. We know that Dwight Howard could in 2009. The one other thing I want to say about that time period, because it's so bizarre to me when I was researching March 7, 1954, on March 8, 1954, the Milwaukee Hawks who lost to the Minneapolis Lakers that day. The next day they went home and they played a double header against the Baltimore Bullets. And when I say double header, I mean the Bullets and the Hawks played two games. That's never happened in the history of basketball before 1954 or after. You old time Nick guys know at the old garden on 50th Street and 8th Avenue, um, they used to play double headers at the garden, but it would be the Knicks against somebody and then, you know, somebody else against somebody. Nobody ever played a doubleheader. But on March 8, 1954, maybe the two weirdest days in the history of the NBA, somebody should write a book on that, but on March 8, 1954, they played a doubleheader and the lowly Milwaukee Hawks beat the even lowlier Baltimore Bullets in both games. So again, raise the rim in the dunk contest, let's see what can happen. Think about it, although it'll never happen. Think, you know, 50 years from now when the average height is going to be 7 feet, will they still be playing on a 10-foot rim? If they do, it'll be a joke. Um, and again, take a look at March 7th and March 8th, 1954, two of the most fascinating days in the history of the NBA. This is Steve Callis speaking of sports. We'll see you the next time.